Well, hello everybody. This is Dr. Novak here. I wanted to show you the goldfish tank. I just took this this morning and it's been over two months since I've been adding hydrogen peroxide to the aquarium. And as you can see, the algae problems I was having is gone. But I've been doing some tests on this aquarium and I've been checking out the nitrates and phosphates. And as you can see, as you look at this aquarium, you don't see algae growing all over the uplift tube. Algae used to grow on top of the bubbler in the back. You don't see algae really all over the rocks. There's a little bit of this fine algae on one of the rocks. The plants look nice, clean, clear. There's a little bit of algae in the aquarium. But I did notice that uh, things in the aquarium, like the thermometer probe that goes inside the aquarium, is uh, clean. I cleaned it, and it doesn't seem to get algae on it very quickly. But I'm looking at the tank, and I'm adding the hydrogen peroxide in, which I have done several videos on. And the algae problems are basically gone. You see a little bit on the wood, but otherwise it's not a problem anymore like it used to be. But I started thinking to myself, why is this algae even coming around in the first place? One thing I was thinking of, I saw a video and a guy said, oh, I made three plenums in different size aquariums and they all failed. And uh, it's no good. It doesn't work. Uh, I had to take them down. I had to try a new method. Now, if you look at his three aquariums in the video, you will notice they're all different sizes. He makes a plenum. He says, I followed everything to a T, everything to a T. Well, first thing you notice right away, he's using strip lights with a lot of blue in them. That's not good. Another thing I noticed with his videos with all three aquariums, he has the exact same algae problem in all three aquariums. Now that's kind of funny. That's a red flag right there that you're cross-contaminating your aquariums. Because if you have the same exact algae in all three aquariums, you're cross-contaminating your aquariums. I don't have the exact same algae problems in all my aquariums because I don't cross-contaminate them. But apparently you can see if you have three tanks and they all have the same exact algae grown in all three and you're having a problem, that means you're cross-contaminating. And here's the probe I was talking about. Look how clean it is. And I cleaned this probe maybe a month ago and still no algae's grown on it with me injecting the hydrogen peroxide into it. But that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make here is my curiosity said, well, I'm going to start testing for nitrates and phosphates because Nitrates and phosphates are your enemy when it comes to algae problems. And why isn't the tank really keeping up with the algae problems? So as I've been testing, I noticed that phosphates have been quite high. And uh, they're like, uh, I, I just did a phosphate test, in fact. And that particular test was 2.23 parts per million of PO4. And that's high. And I've been testing that for weeks, and it's the same thing. Every week I change my water. I test the water out. And I also checked for my nitrates. And as you can see on the chart, it shows you what the nitrates are. I just tested my nitrates. And this is after only two days. And it's... 20 parts per million. And that's after two days of me doing a water change. But as you look down the list, you'll see uh, phosphates, when I changed the water on Friday, were 2.16 parts per million, and nitrates were 30 parts per million. Then you'll see the week after before that was 31 parts per million of nitrates and 2.32 uh, parts per million of phosphates. And then the week before that, well, there was a, a glitch. I found out I didn't clean the vial out clean enough where it said nitrates at 43 
and uh, phosphates were 1.13. So I cleaned out the vial that I was using. So, and then as you go down for another week, it was 1.88 points per million of PO4 and 31 points per million. Well, as you can see, the phosphates and nitrates have been pretty steady within one week. Just the lower numbers on top are the ones where I took it after only two days of after me doing a large water change where the fish were only in about two inches of water and then I replace all the water in the goldfish aquarium. So I've been testing all my tests with what is called a smart digital water testing. It, it's called an exact dip or exact eye dip is what it's called. The test kit that you see here. And this test kit, basically I use out in the field because it's easier for me to have all my tests and one thing and, and do my test out in the field. So when I'm in the field, this is the kit, kit I use. Now just for uh, the double check this test kit, when I did the phosphate and nitrates, I decided when I came home, I checked the phosphates out. It was 2.21 parts per million using the HANA phosphate, which lines up almost exactly with the IDIP test kit. And when I checked with the HANA Marine, which people have beat me up about, 21 parts per million. And uh, if I remember correctly, the phosphates that I just read were 20 parts per million. So I'm one part per million off using the HANA Marine test compared to this professional test, which showed 20 parts per million of NO3. So both kits are going against each other. Now, people have made mention, oh, you can't use the Marine. It's it's not uh, going to be accurate. Well, I just proved it right now. It's accurate. It's accurate enough for what we're using it for. I'm not going to complain about one part per million difference in nitrates, whether the HANA is checking higher than the uh, than the IDIP is. So that, that, that has been solved that you can get yourself either test kits and they will work just fine, and they're very accurate. Okay, the point I'm bringing up here, though, and this is something that I wanted to bring up, is why is my nitrates and phosphates going up so high? So, as we all know, I personally overfeed on purpose. I feed my goldfish a lot of food. It also had the geophagus in there, and the geophagus, of course, I pulled them out, and I found out the nitrates and phosphates are exactly the same whether the geophagus were in the aquarium or whether I pulled all those fish out of the 40 breeder. Hmm, that's a little strange, isn't it, that the phosphates and nitrates are exactly the same after I pulled out five fish in one week. They're exactly the same. They didn't vary. Okay, what what what's going on here? So... I started looking at the food I feed, and one of the foods I feed is called Royal Guppy, and it's in pellets. And on there, I think it's made by Azu, yeah, Azu Bio Corporation. And on there, on the container, it says phosphorus 1% minimum. So it does have phosphates in it. They tell you, but it doesn't tell you what the nitrates are in the royal guppy food that I feed. So when I looked at that, I thought, well, that's strange that they didn't tell you how much nitrates is in the food. They tell you it's 1% phosphates, but not nitrates. So I went to the food I like to use a lot, and that food is a spectrum. And I use different spectrums. I use LG Max, New Life Spectrum, LG Max. I use New Life Spectrum for small fish. and so I started looking at these containers of food, and we all seen the New Life Spectrum containers of food. But do you know on none of their food do they ever list what the phosphates are or nitrates in their food? 
Most foods in the past would indicate what their nitrates and phosphates were so the hobbyists would know. I mean, I have lots of food where it's it would say, well, here's your nitrates and here's your phosphates. But it's funny that these foods, they completely leave out what the nitrates are and what the phosphates are. They tell you what the cured protein is or something like that, but I guess a lot of, um, well, it used to be common practice that fish food would tell you that. And now they seem to be eliminating that little bit of information from your food. But the only thing I can think of, it's got to be the food. It's got to be the food constantly in introducing more nitrates and phosphates than what the system can even handle. Because we also have to remember that goldfish are ammonia producers. They, they eat a lot, but they produce a lot of ammonia. And we know for a fact when my whole system shut down out there in the Lanai for over two weeks and I came back and I realized the canister filter was off and everything uh, except for the plenum didn't stop and the bubbler didn't stop. So those two, and I did a test, there was no ammonia, no nitrites, but the nitrates were at 30 parts per million. And the phosphate was like two point some parts per million. And I thought, wow, that's, that's funny that the canister filter is off, yet I'm still getting the same parts per million as far as nitrate and phosphate. But the fish were still eating, even though everything was shut down except for the plenum. And I'm starting to wonder if these fish foods that now they are not telling us what their phosphates are or what their nitrates are, are causing a lot of problem. Now, I know the guy when I watched his video and he made these three tanks and saying it doesn't work, I'm going to try a different method. Of course, I could see right off the bat what he was doing wrong. But I didn't make a comment because it's not my position. If he wants to say it doesn't work, that's fine. Uh, go ahead, say it doesn't work. But like I said, the red flag was you have the same algae in all three tanks. That means you're cross-contaminating your aquariums. That's a fact. We also know you have too much blue light from your strip lights that you're putting on. Of course, he says he cut back on his time he was had his lights on. But he never said how long he had his lights on. Usually if people have algae problems, they're going to limit their lights to no more than six hours a day. But he, he never, I don't think, now mentioned the time his lights are even on. And he says he reduced food and, and he did this, that, and the other. Thing. But his plants weren't really flourishing that great. So was it really something that uh, he how he set it up was incorrect? Was it, He said also he tried to adjust the plenum to very slow, to fast, and that didn't work. Well, he's talking about new tanks, and they're going through new tank syndrome, and this is a problem that everybody has. Even with my nitrates and phosphates as high as they are, and I am putting the hydrogen peroxide in the aquarium that seems to be taken care of, the only thing I can really think of, it's got to be the food. The food is overwhelming the aquarium because of the goldfish and with the geophagus that was in there. And it's just overwhelming aquarium where it can't take care of the phosphate and nitrate like it's supposed to. It's just too overwhelming. I know some people are going to say right off the bat, well, isn't the plenum supposed to take care of that? Well, uh, I guess you got to look at it like a car engine, you know, isn't the, you know, you can't put a, uh, get a car and put an engine in it, inspect it, you know, to produce, you know, 695 horsepower. You've got to have cubic inches to do that. You know, you can't expect that. There's only so much you can do, only so much work it's going to be able to do for you for that size engine. And a plenum's the same way. For that size plenum and how much load you're putting on it, there's only so much it's going to be able to do. That's it, period. That's it. That's that's the way it is. It's the law of physics. You overdo it, it can't handle it. Sewage treatment facilities go through this same exact thing. 
they get an overload and they find out they can't take all the nitrates and phosphates out of the water that go back to your tap, right? And we see it because I hear, hear complaints of people from other countries complaining that they have uh, large amounts of nitrates and phosphates already in their tap water. It's because their facilities are too small. They need to make them larger. This is something that I think everyone needs to understand that food just adds more pollution to your aquarium besides the fish themselves adding more to the aquarium. There's only so much it's going to be able to do a plenum or an anoxy filter unless you decide you're going to increase something. In aquatic environment, which we are trying to contain in our aquariums, it's, it's an unstable environment. All you can do is the best you can. So this is Dr. Novak. Uh, thank you for watching. I don't mind letting my audience see this is the results I'm getting. But I'm also seeing food is no longer putting their nitrate and phosphates on. Why? Why is all of a sudden it's become a big secret? Because they know those are the two elements that are going to cause the biggest problems in your aquarium. And sometimes your aquarium may need a little help by putting hydrogen peroxide in it like I have. And it solves your algae problems. So until next time, happy fish keeping. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.